the uh, Whitley Finance Committee and Select Board um, hybrid meeting where we have um, individuals here in the room um, and we have individuals who are at home. Uh, we have Brenda Darty at home. We have Lynn Sibley at home as well. And around the table we have, could you please announce yourself? Donna Wiley. Fred Barron, Select Board. Dan Kennedy, Finance. Jim Kirkendo, Finance. Paul Anteo, Finance. Tom Maher, Finance. All righty. So I'd like to open the meeting by, um, everyone had a chance to review the minutes from April 5th. <coughs> we have a motion, we accept the minutes. Second. All those in favor, we will take a roll call um, because of uh, Brenda. I'm here, but I can't vote on this. Okay, that's right. It wasn't good point. Okay, uh, let's just vote. Yay! Yeah. Aye. Aye. Don't get a vote. That's right. You don't get a vote. Aye. Aye. Jim. Aye. Jim. Paul. Aye. Aye. Okay. Passes. All right. The next piece on our agenda is to review and discuss personnel committee recommendations. For FY23 operating budgets and items related to FY23. So we will start with uh, personnel committee recommendations. Okay. Do we have any thoughts about these recommendations or the process um, of the recommendations um, at this time? Anybody want to start this? Okay. No. Yeah. Yeah. I feel as though it's uh, too much, and I think it's a basically a double dip because of the raises we give out, and then we turn around and give a big cola. Whereas the <clears throat> older taxpayers in Wendy don't get that. We get a normally a smaller cola, and, uh, an increase in our. Part B insurance. So I, I think that we have to scrutinize this, try to bring it down. It's, it, it's come to our um, understanding that the pers personnel committee uses um, both the CPI and uses um, what is being um, dealt with in uh, at the federal level with Social Security. Um, I have a letter here. Uh, from the Social Security Department, and it's it says plainly that it is 5.9%. Um, with along with that though, it's it's the largest increase in 40 years for COLA, and if we go back to 2021, it was 1.3, 2018, 2.0. In addition to that, we have a situation with uh, Social Security where Medicare um, is tied into it. So you can get an increase in Social Security, but you're also going to get an increase on Medicare costs that will come from it. Okay, so there's that for you. And I, 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 I certainly think that has to be taken into consideration. Um, part of this, part of the personnel committee. Uh, part of their decisions were to increase the level of compensation for certain positions in the town based on looking at averages or median salaries amongst 10 towns around us. Um, I don't think that's a bad approach. I don't. I mean, you gotta compare, try to compare apples to apples. You gotta do something, you gotta start somewhere. Right. Um, so I looked at those 10 towns and over the past four or five days, I have called each of those towns to determine what the COLA is in each of those towns. Um, the only town I couldn't get a hold of was Hinsdale. And I called them, I called them four times and I still could not, and they don't have anything they don't have anything on their website except that they do not have a personnel committee and the select board and finance committee makes the decisions it appears okay 
Um, so when I looked at the other towns, and I also included Sunderland and um, and I had Williamsburg in here as well. And the the range for Cola went from Ashfield at 7.5% down to um, a couple of towns at 2.9. Okay. Now, the Ashfields and Outlaw, because in discussing this with them, this is the first time they've given a percentage of coal. Prior to this, they give 75 cents an hour, up to 75 cents an hour increase to their employees. So this was kind of a one-off. Um, very hard to compare us to Ashfield. So if you throw out the high, you throw out the low, you have an average of these towns at 2.417 for coal. Um, those towns are Ashley, Ashfield, Buckland, who has not decided yet. Uh, Conway, Hatfield, who has not decided yet. But they are in the 2 to 2.5 range. Um, Conway's 2 to 3. More, more likely, it will be 3. Uh, Leverett's at 3. Pelham, 2.5. Shelburne, 3.5. Shootsbury, 2.42. West Hampton, it looks like it's going to be 3%, but it was 2.5 last year. And Sunderland is 2.5 for non-union. Um, if I go beyond that, and Williamsburg is 2.0. 2, 2 so we have Williamsburg at 2.0. Uh, we have Asheville at 7.5. Um, I think they're outliers. When we look at the average of all these other towns from my map, which is suspect, at best, um, if we're we're in there right right about two point four one seven or two and a half percent. That's what that's what the research, my research over the past five days has shown. The other thing has shown is that I have asked each one of these towns if they allow or if they have employees that serve on personnel committee, and those answers are. Um, no, one yes, Sunderland. 92% of these towns do not have employees on their personnel committee. So I think we discussed this before, and I think it's a conflict of interest. Um, and I like to throw that out to the floor and what you think of that factor. Anybody want to comment on that? My only comment was, is that within the purview of the Finance Committee? Is what? The composition of the Personnel Committee. Is, is the composition of the Personnel? No. No, it's not. No. What, uh, what, what would come, what the discussion may lead to is either an article on town floor or um, a, um, some other kind of town vote. So the town well, yeah, but it's not relevant to the finance committee's mandate. Well, it kind of is. It kind of is because I think it sets the stage for how colas are determined in towns. The recommendation. Okay. But it's just an aside. It's not going to have anything to do with what we decide here, but we, it's, not, it's not a budget issue directly. Not a budget issue directly, but it does affect a number in some way, shape, or form. Okay, so let's get back to the COLA number itself. Lynn has a question. Okay, questions. Lynn. Um, she wants to know who is going to represent employee interests. If you don't have what she's saying is if you don't, you don't have, have a town an employee, employee on the personnel committee, who's going to represent them? And I, I agree with that. Yeah. Um, 
I asked that question on a few towns and a few towns said that they would bring in an employee to act as an advocate, um, but they were non-voting. So that's the, um, that's what the town of Deerfield does, that's what the town of Conway does. Um, and I would imagine that it wouldn't be hard from um, to do that. Um, we have a comment from Joyce Palm Fortune um, that she feels the town employees. Joyce, is that is that a comment or is that your? That's a, a, a comment to uh, Lynn had asked who's going to represent the employees' interests. Normally, when you want someone to represent your interests, you form a union or you hire an attorney. So I think that was the comment. It was more addressing the employees who were on the call who may be wondering what we would do if the personnel committee didn't have an employee on it. Question, go ahead, well, comment. Comments, not questions. And I mean, we are, we are discussing something that is not directly in the purview of the finance committee. Although I have to say, it seems to me any committee should have the wherewithal to make an observation. <laughs> I'm serious, actually, why not? Sure. So, but um, it seems to me that the committees that um, vote on the town's budget should of course have as one of their objectives making sure that staff members are paid adequately so that we keep so that we recruit and retain the staff members we want and that's part of the you know an advocate um, i don't think we have to assume immediately that a, a different model than exists now um, would lead to an adversarial situation. I think that's a leap to go to that immediately. I think we want to avoid that, but I believe that it's important that everybody realize the, um, the, uh, the world that is around us and how the other towns are approaching the same issues. And I can tell you, nobody's happy. Nobody's happy about this. Nobody likes to talk about it. Nobody, you know, it's it's not a fun time for anybody, but it's something that we have to deal with. So um, getting back to the um, getting back to the number of um, we have 3.75. Uh, now, it, in terms of the approach to the number. I thought that there were a couple of towns that kind of did things um, in a formulaic way. And one of them was Shootsbury. And so what Shootsbury does is it, uh, it looks at the CPI for New England. It averaged over three years, year after year, month after month kind of thing, kind of a rolling um, average. But at the same time, they put a cap on it. High of four, a low of one. So that's their range. And it, if for whatever reason, the CPI um, is high over time, they said that they would take a look at that again. So, but it is a formulaic process. It, 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 has, some, it has some merit to it. Um, so I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, and, then, and, and then there are um, a, a number of towns that have the composition um, and what the, of the personnel committee nearby was, others do not. Some have no personnel committee whatsoever. It's just a select board. Um, some it's just a select board. Some is a select board in the, in the finance committee. So um, it kind of runs the gamut out there. Um, so I think we've had a chance to discuss it. We've had a chance to look at it. It's something that was held over from last week and certainly the week before that. Um, so 
Um, do we have any recommendations? We have a. Do we have a question? Amy, I can't hear I you can't. at all. I do any of the towns you talk to have stepped increases? Have stepped increases. No, in fact, you know, I was I was over in Sunderland um, this afternoon, and um, they will be discussing that. Uh, that is on their agenda to look at stepped increases um, for town personnel, just like just like uh, the, the, uh, the schools have. So something similar to it, but no one else really had um, any, they didn't offer that to me at the time. Um, it's probably another question I should have put in there, but you know, based on um, our conversations, uh, it only came up once and that was in Sunderland and it will be explored there. You have questions or comments? I would just comment on the Shootsbury system. Yep. Might normally work well, but the situation I could have now is that a big one year spike in inflation yep. to take a three year rolling average does not adequately reflect current circumstances. I guess, I guess you probably would. That, you know, right now we're in the middle of an abnormally big spike in inflation. Right. Yeah. But if you go back to the past two years, inflation was low. To average them out doesn't help people pay for gas or food now. Right. Okay. Um, right. Um, I, I agree with that statement. What? You know, I don't even, I don't, there's X some number of town employees, and you're talking about giving them a 3.75% COLA that the, ta the taxpayers, the rest of the town, who is also dealing with inflation, is going to have to pay. And I don't think that's fair. I mean, I, you know, you, you it just doesn't make sense to me. It, it's too much of an increase. I voted well, no for it. My, my comment was only about the, the formula. That the formula, we, yeah. That we're talking about. Yeah. Okay. To talk about the you know, particular yeah. Yeah. increase or whatever, in this case, is a different is a, yeah. another discussion for two minutes from now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, some other points that, that arose during the process. Um, is that, um, you know, how we, and I, I believe in this, you take the towns around, you see what they're doing, and, uh, you know, you, you're comparing positions within each town, and we have a few positions that look like they're in back of the um, average. Um, and then, um, so a couple of things. Um, one, if that's gonna continue to happen, that we're going to take these 10 towns, we're going to average them out, see what the median is, are our people at it, below it, or above it. Um, then we have to know, I think we have to start taking a look at total comp compensation. Um, we pay, you know, healthcare, there's, there's other factors that go into it. And so that is a key point. The other point is, I see we have these positions that are behind. Do we have any positions ahead? Do we have uh, any, any positions at? I have to look at the stuff, but there may be one or two, but they're not up there. They're not, we're not paying, you know, eight or 10% more for anything, really. If, if anything, we're usually on the low end. Well, I think that's something that. But as a personnel committee, you're recommending to the finance committee, I think as the finance committee, we would want to see that we, this is the percentage of um, employees who were at or above the average of the towns. Yeah, somewhere and, that. that and and that. here are the positions that are not. Right. 
Yeah, we see that. We see those that are not. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, so I, I, I think you have to see both sides of the coin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. Go ahead, Matt. Okay. Uh, let's address the first one. In the last five years, how many times has the coal have gone down? Never. And that is, I think, a major problem because if you look at others, the cola does not always, should, should not always increase. There are years that you should get less of cola. And we do as retirees. Yes. And if, if the personnel committee keeps increasing cola, escalating that, along with comparing with other towns, we are just going to be Pricing the taxpayer. That just yeah. shouldn't be like that. No question. No question. Um, look, we all, I think, appreciate what our town employees do for this town. Yeah. I think we also have to appreciate that the private sector residents, taxpayers of this town, come up and pay that bill every single year. And, and that, is, that is why the town can progress and go on because of the private tax dollars that are collected and move the town along. Joyce. Question. I just wanted to ask a clarifying question. Um, and I don't know exactly, who, was it Dan maybe who was speaking earlier? When they say the COLA is always going up. Are they saying that the percentage goes up every year? Or are they saying that there is a COLA every year? Is I don't know which one they're objecting to. Um, that the percentage goes up every year? Because I don't think that's actually true. But well, generally, cost of living does go up every year, usually not as much as it did this year. Right. Um, but uh, the, the percentage is not going up every year. So I, I guess I, I wanted a, a little clarification there as to what they mean by the COLA going up. Well, I, I, I think he started it by saying that the COLA never goes down. And when you say going it, down, meaning the cost of living down. though hasn't gone down. So I, I've not had a year where we had sufficient deflation that the actual cost of living went down by any percentage. Well, we don't have those numbers in front of us at the time. I would agree. Right. Certainly not on the time that I've been on the personnel committee. We, in this country, we've never had a deflation no. in the last. Yeah. No, so, so if that's what he means, that he's making the observation that prices always go up and they never go down, then I'd agree with them. But if he's saying that everything going up is just because we have a personnel committee that keeps recommending a COLA, I don't really get that. I mean, it's, it's an observation, but it shouldn't be a critique. Do you know what I mean? I, sorry, I just wanted to, to clarify what was, what was really meant there. Ian, is that? Well, basically what I was comparing back to is in uh, the in back years between 21, and 2018, 18 was the higher year and 21 was lower in what they gave us for a COLA. So the government evidently then bases a difference than you basically. We got a comment from Lynn that says, it says, yes, it does. The COLA has been 3% and the next, so let's say in 2018, it was 3%. And in 2019, it was two percent. I don't, I don't have the numbers. It goes up and down. It yes, does. it does. It, it, it definitely does. goes up and down. And I, I think that we're always a little better than the federal government. I think we're always a little better than Social oh, Security. Security definitely. I mean, Social Security. Uh, you know, and given I don't know percentage-wise how many individuals in this town 
are on social security, fixed income, etc. Um, but I'm I'm sure there's a sizable number. Um, and um, you know, if we were to just use the social security um, number, I mean, it would be like a yo-yo, it would keep up and down. Um, but well, and I, I think Tom said this last week, but just to reiterate, the, the unusual situation for this year was that although the social security increase was 5.9%, the cost in the Medicare premiums, which are deducted from the Social Security, went up 16 and a half percent. Well, there's a number and, and, and yeah. you know, the base is different, but the, but the recipients did not receive 5.9 percent. So that's, that's why I would advocate that when we look at compensation for town employees, we look at total compensation, um, health care, and everything else, because that's a job description. Um, you're in the private sector, you look at what's, you know, the term is what's the package? What's the package? What's the salary? What's the uh, the ben benefit package? What's the uh, the bonus package? All of it's a it's an employment package. It's not just salary. So what does this person really cost? Right. What does the what does that position really cost this town? Yeah. Um, and I think that's moving forward. We're not going to solve that. We're not no. going to change that tonight. Moving forward, that would be very, uh, very useful piece. I, well, I, quite, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. I'd like to point out, though, that all the COLA increases we've had in the past haven't put us out of whack with the other surrounding communities. If we get too low, we adjust it upward, as we did with a couple of rates here. If we get too high, we just let it sit there and then eventually the tide will rise. It's a moving target of the, it is. when it you're is. comparing. Sure. So I don't think that uh, making a big point over you know, a quarter of a point or a half a point of COLA in a given year in the long term is going to make a difference. The, the wage rate will settle out to an average. You know, if, if our COLA puts us up too high, then we're going to have no increases for two, three, four years, and the other towns will catch up to us. And it's true. Okay, we will pay an extra couple of thousand dollars in the intervening years. But ultimately, as it's a moving target. The COLA is not going to put us out of whack with other towns. And it's not going to blow our budget out of the water and make people not afford it, because that's what the market will bear for those positions. If we don't pay those wages, we're not going to get the employees. I, I, I just so including the word wages. Well, we that's wages all we're talking right, right now, all we're talking about is wages. We're talking about hourly and coal. But but that's we, not, the, the total package is a completely different subject. But right now, we're, we're not comparing total packages with other towns. We're comparing wage rates. I think um, employer, employee consultants uh, would say all the time that um, that employees that leave any organization, that um, salary is usually not the top reason why they go. And, um, yeah. you know, um, okay, I, that, that, that's a tip that right now we're just talking about the month, the dollars and cents. Yeah, right. We were. We don't have the information in front of us about no, no. packages or anything no. else. No. We're talking about. And we, don't have, and, colas. and we don't have 10 years of colas going backwards to, to look at right well, now. No, you but, can suggest that. But we've got, we've got institutional memory. We know that our colas tend to run in the two, two to two and a half. Two to yeah. ten. What and was the last year? Anybody remember what was the last year? Two and a half. I, I forget. Two two and and we're, we're usually right in that, yeah. in, in that in the five years I've been yeah. here. Yeah. I mean, in that, that was one year part. was three. But once again, we, you know, if, 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 we, if we come in two by one year, that will even out over time because we'll just the, the wage rate for that position we will keep stagnant until the other towns catch up to us. Well, that's if I I never really quite looked at it like the way you're saying, Fred. But and I don't I'm not gonna pick on any one person, any no. one employee, but 
if and and I understand, let's say we somebody gets a, a two thousand dollar cola, yeah. that's going to raise their base salary up. So next year, when we look at uh, maybe they want to pay an adjustment or whatever, we can look at the other ten pounds and and they're right where they ought to be. They're not, so they don't get an increase, but they're still going to get another cola. As is the person in the other community as well. That's true. That's true. But <clears throat> we, we, it's, but the, the colas are just all I'm saying is the colas aren't pushing us out of line. No, with anyone else because everyone else is getting colas. Right. And if our colas turn out to have been too big, that will rectify itself over time. Well, and besides that, the benchmarking that we've just done is based on the salaries that people have now. Right. I mean, I, I, I can't find it right now, but Brian gave us a chart that showed every, pretty much every position in 10 or 12 other towns. Mm -hmm. and, and that did not look like we were wildly out of whack overall. So with all due respect, I don't, I don't think we have to dwell too much on what percentage increases were given in previous years. But the question is, where are we now? <laughs> and what do we do that's right? Yeah. <laughs> I fear that it may be difficult to collect total compensation data from these other 10 towns and may muddy the waters enough to make it more challenging than it should be. Yeah. So I, totally I have my reservations about looking at total compensation right. just from the standpoint of gathering accurate data from yeah. the, all the other towns. Yeah. You know, every, every job, every job varies in a little degree from town to town right right it, it's uh, going to be comparison you know back. some some of them are required to work 40 hours a week and then anything over that they get overtime uh, in this in this town it may be 40 hours a week and then you get comp time so you know it's hard to compare we've tried that before and it's it's difficult to compare yeah the total packages are going to be it's apples oranges peaches pears i think every most towns are package. paying the same uh, health insurance, you know, we're paying 70% or whatever it is, 75%. And most towns are in that same, we're not out of whack one way or another that way, I don't think. Now, in general, on most things, we're not going to be no. out of it. We're going to keep yeah. balancing and making yeah. adjustments so yeah. that we're roughly in line with the other towns. Exactly. Before Fred, before Jim, Joyce, you had your, you had a hand up. Oh, yeah, I just forgot to put it down from the previous time. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Um, I think it's a good discussion, and I think the Finance Committee has to come up with um, a number. And I will reiterate that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 towns that I um, called to ask what the COLA was. I'll say again that um, the top town was Ashfield at 7.5%. This was a one-time one-off because according to the individual who I spoke there, spoke to there, his name was Paul McClatchy, town administrator, that normally they give up to 75 cents per hour increase and not a percentage on top of the cola. So that's so that's a them. The low um, on this list is um, the low is Williamsburg, and Williamsburg is at 2.0. Um, the only in, the only town that I could not get a hold of was Hinsdale. And I had multiple tries to get a hold of them. Okay, but that didn't happen. So when you take out the one off high of Ashfield at 7.5, and you remove the low of Williamsburg at 2.0, we have an average of right about 2.417. Um, excuse me, Paul. You said some of them have not made the termination. And yes, how, how many? How many of those have not? Yet? We have 
We have a not yet, but what is recommended in Hatfield is two to 2.5. We have a not yet um, in Conway. Conway is a two to three. The unions will be 3% uh, unionized. Um, Sunderland, right now, they're looking at 2.5, um, but that's non-union. They don't have a union number yet. And um, who else um, on here that might have some? Um, we talked about Hatfield. Did I say Hatfield? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. I did. You just mentioned that I was going to make sure. That yeah. So. Got in with the other stuff. So. Troop personnel committee is saying 3.75. The averages in the town around us right now is at almost 2.5. If you want to round up, round up to 2.5. I would throw a number out of three. I thought you just said the average when you threw away the high and the low is more like 3.4. No, 2.4, Joyce. Okay. 2.417. 2.417. Um, so, are you making that up? I'm throwing it out. A motion to the group. Throwing that out? I'm throwing out to the group. If there are, is it, there are other numbers that others would like to put on the floor at this time. Um, I mean, that's that's why we're here. Um, so, may sure. I ask that you just um, tell me the percentages in the towns that have already set their percentage? Please. Yeah, sure. Um, okay. Ashfield, seven and a half. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Conway, um, two to three percent. Mm -hmm. Unions will be 3%. Mm -hmm. Hatfield has not had a vote yet, but if according to Marlena Machonsky, who is the town administrator, the suggestion would be between two and two and a half percent. Um, Leverett, according to town administrator Marjorie McGinnis, 3%. Hello, according to town clerk, Sandra Burgess, 2.5%. Shelburne, according to town clerk, Joseph Judd, 3.5%. Shootsbury, town administrator, Rebecca Torres, Though I think I spoke to the town clerk, Grace Spanish. Um, they're at 2.42. Um, a note from Lynn on the board. Shelburne also has steps. Shelburne has steps. Okay. Um, and then um, West Hampton, 3%. Sunderland, and I was here today, and they're at 2.5 non union. Hasn't been decided yet, okay, but that is what they believe is going to be presented. And Williamsburg, um, the town administrator I spoke to, Nick Kikomo, it's at 2.5. Zero. Okay, in Hinsdale, no response. No response. That's what we have here. Um, so, um, where are we? Again? I would throw out a number, I would say, I would go along with 3%. I could support 3%. 3%. Um, yes. And Brenda? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, so I was coming up with a slightly lower number, but it's my first year on the committee. I have so much to learn, and I've been in private sector my whole life, and so I was sort of thinking 2.75, but I'm delighted with three um, because I want to recognize our employees, and I have lots to learn, so I'd, I'd be happy with 3% as well. Um, do I have a motion? Do we need a motion on this? With Brian. Uh, I'm, I'm, say, I think yeah, I think you should. should. You probably need a motion because Brian's got to plug that number in. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. I would make a motion that we change the recommended uh, COLA to a straight 3%. I'll second it. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 You made it a 3 budget and everything that's related to it. What about the other personnel rec thing? I was so taken on this that I forgot about that. God bless you. Okay. Um, where are we for us? If I can ask a question about this, I don't know if you even know the answer. Sure. Is the personnel commission uh, committee responsible for recommending whether this position be filled or simply no. for doing a job description? Just doing a job description. Okay. And I guess right. Yeah, yeah, I, just want, I just want to make clear what the, the framework of the discussion is. It's a, I believe it's a select board decision. Oh, I, I think you're right. I'm just, yeah. I just want to make sure that we just, that the, we the just terms of debate are, are not that we're debating a no, recommendation we're to, we're not deciding on, the personnel committee did not decide on need or anything. We just, just clarifying that. Yeah. And I have a, a point of clarification question. We have four, four separate recommendations from the personnel committee. Will we discuss and vote on each of them? Yeah, I was wondering if we could start with number one and yeah, for example, which is the town clerk. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we should do that. Yeah. Okay. All righty, let's have at it. Um, wage request, position changes, town clerk. Um, Jim, could you read that, please? The town clerk position is currently set to work 22 hours per week. The request was submitted by the town current town clerk, Amy Schrader, to increase the number of hours from 22 hours to 28 hours per week. The reason for the request was to expand customer service hours for residents to account for increased responsibilities related to the elections and early voting, and to be compensated for hours that are currently worked but uncompensated. Personnel committee unanimously recommends that the town clerk be compensated for 28 hours per week. This would result in an approximate $8,500 $8, $8, increase to the town clerk budget. I think we discussed this. Um, I think Brian went to it at length. Um, do I have a moment? Why don't we take, should we take them one at a time? Okay, yeah. let's take, take them one at a time. time. Okay. Um, do I have a motion to accept this recommendation? I move that this recommendation be accepted as we I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Brenda? Brenda? Aye. Aye. Can you not hear me? Aye. Yes, yeah. 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 thank you. I can't thank see you, you anymore. So. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry. We're on a different screen. You, you'll, you'll be back. <laughs> Donna, could you take the number two, please? Uh, all right, um, Chris Williams, chair of the Recreation Commission, submitted a proposal to create a new recreation director slash coordinator position that would be responsible for coordinating recreation activities 
Or well, this says the proposal included a request for eight hours per week and a starting salary around thirty five dollars per hour. That is not exactly. what the personnel committee recommended, no. which was five hours. Five hours. Per five hours at twenty twenty one dollars an hour. Yep. Um, I, I think we're working off of a March memorandum. March 10th. Here. Yeah. But, and, but you met. The, the, the yeah, we met week. last week. Right. And yeah. came up with this. Right. Well, okay. So right. this is descriptors are obsolete at this point. Mm, well, yeah. But this one. Well, because it says seeking additional information, I think you've got right additional information. You're seeking. Seeking. Yeah. Um, Brian's email to us said that the five hours at $21 an hour on ground. Slightly yeah. cost five fifty five hundred dollars a year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I guess I have a question of clarification. Sure. Um, is are we capping the hours at five hours per yes. week? Like that stated more clearly somehow. I would like to comment on this proposal and tell me when I should do that. Go ahead. Um, um, I am not in favor of this. And it, it's not that I'm not in favor of organized, you know, athletic activities. I, I am. It's uh, two reasons. Um, one is uh, functional. I think a proliferation of very low number of hours, staff positions that report to volunteer committees that are independent of centralized or is loosely connected <laughs> to a central HR function is not a good plan. Um, the other is maybe philosophical, which is that um, the town, um, partly with CPA money, but the town, um, I think, does a good job investing in the capital facilities that support various activities in town. But we haven't yet I mean, I guess I call them extracurricular activities. We haven't supported staffing for any of them. And it seems to me that if we're discussing providing staff support for organized athletics, there are lots of people in town with lots of different interests. Some people are interested in being in musical groups. Some people might like their kids to have more interesting, fun science stuff in the summer. Um, but, you know, I don't need to go on. But it seems yep. to me it's, this is really skewed in one direction. And I, what I don't understand, um, well, I have the impression, and I may be wrong, that the Recreation Committee, Commission Committee, is almost always comprised of parents of kids in our public schools now. It, it's kind of a school committee. It is for volunteers. So it doesn't have parents of the many, many children in this town who don't go to the public schools. It doesn't have members of, I learned when Chris talked to us, that there are adult groups that, I, I, it seems to me the Recreation Commission, if it's having trouble meeting this need, could reach out for a different composition to share this job. Um, Chris said they've got a good online scheduling system. That, you know, it, it's, yeah. well, I, I mean, I don't want to get into telling them how well, to do their business. My first two uh, reservations are really the important ones. Well, I, you know, I think that possibly in time that the recreation director this position um, might be able to do the things that you're speaking of. Or if, maybe if, if the town thinks we should be paying for someone to support right. those other right. kinds of extracurricular well, what activities. I do know, what I do know is that the amount of work for one person in a volunteer setting um, is an awful lot to ask. And um, this, and you're right about this recreation, the department, the group, the kids that are in it are almost all come from the public schools. No question. It's a it's a uh, it's an extension of what happens in school. And that's not a bad thing. Um, no, no, no. It's it's but, it, but, it's but it is skewed. But it is skewed. There's no question. Um, and I think until you have 
you have a paid position where you can approach this individual as either a committee, a select board, or whatever to try to expand and be more inclusive uh, within the town. Um, I think it's very difficult to do unless an individual is uh, sort of bound by the fact that they're being paid. Um, Joyce, Palm of Fortune uh, to everyone. Did you read that, Amy? She took it off really quick. It, it doesn't matter. There it is. Nope. Okay. She just says, in her day, all the children were welcome, and many non public school kids are also part of it. Yeah. I was talking not so much about the uh, participants in the activities, but the composition of the volunteer group. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. That, yeah. That, yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. Serves you know, um, the people who are. And when I read the job description, when I read the job description to go along, I, I thought it was pretty good. Um, I, I, I thought it captured a lot of the essence of what had to be done. Uh, but there was one thing, and one very, very important point that I didn't see mentioned there is that um, there's nothing about sportsmanship. Um, there's nothing about the director having to maintain um, a level of sportsmanship, you know, within the teams, within, within the department. Um, and I think that's a very important one. And let me say why. And we've all seen it. You have parent volunteers, uh, which God bless them, they're there. And I've seen it time and again where teams get stacked uh, because dad wants his kid, his kid has three friends that they're, they're all real good ball players, so they're all going to be on the same team. And then everybody kind of looks the other way. And what's all this happening is dad's going to coach. And but a director is someone who, um, Tries to make sure that does trying to make sure that doesn't happen. And that's I think the taxpayer of Waitley would rather see it be done in a sportsman sportsmanship like manner um, than not. Um, this this is job description was just a general guide to go by it, right? Probably before any final decision is made, it's gonna to have to be gone over again and there will be some adjustments. But generally, I think I thought it was kind of good. Yeah. yeah. Chris did a good job. Yeah. Uh, uh, that he did. I think part of me feels that, I mean, this thing has been running on its, the rec commission's been running all this stuff for years with volunteers. And Nothing against any of the volunteers. I think it is becoming more complicated than a group of volunteers can run. When you start, I don't, to be perfectly honest, I don't know how they figure some of this stuff out. There's, you go to Hurley E Park and there's games going on there on a Saturday and a Sunday from eight o'clock in the morning until eight o'clock at night and on two different ball fields and how they coordinate you know, all of a sudden Frontier has a couple of rainouts and their field is wet. And next thing you know, they're down here at Hurley plant. You know, how they, how, who coordinates all that and who makes all that happen? I don't know. But I think if you have a this director type person, he's going to be, or she, public, or she is yeah. going to be not just baseball, but yeah, you know, the, basketball, all the stuff, soccer. I think we have to realize that facility we have in Waitley is uh, unique is unique and is uh, um, is the envy of many towns around us um, I think we need to run it that's why I had hoped that we would try to increase user fees to the extent of paying for this fifty five hundred dollars a year for this coordinator We've got additional fields, paving the parking lot and driveway. Making a bunch of improvements down there. A host of improvement. I mean, it is a class act. Yeah, it is. No question. And I don't think it's too much to ask to increase user fees. And 5,500 with all the users between adult leagues as well as the school leagues and everything. 
Right. Yes, the rent department has a, has a revolving fund. They're not, they do. They're not, yes, they do rely entirely on down funds. Yeah. Is, yeah. Right? No. Is this fifty five hundred all fees that are required? No, no. The fifty five hundred was by an increase. It's uh, the increase in, in their, their budget. budget. As a result of the coordinators, right. if I remember correctly, right, right. The, the current balance in that revolving fund is sixteen thousand or so. But I, I glanced at the number the other day. I don't know if they have anything that they owe off of that, or, but that was the balance I think at the end of March. Just, just to give you an idea of you know, what level money the revolving fund sits at. Joyce has her hand. Do we have Joyce, Joyce has her hand up. Okay, Joyce. Thanks. Um, just to add what, to what Tommy said, and uh, maybe this addresses a little bit of, um, of what Donna was um, thinking of. Looking at that job description, and I've got it up here on my screen somewhere. There we go. Um, the task, the only, the closest thing that comes to the sportsmanship is promote health, physical, and safe activities for all families. Um, but everything else that's on there are really administrative things. The administrative load that the committee carries, um, I mean, it has to get done, it has to get done right. And um, it's uh, that is a bigger burden. Uh, and that's the burden we're trying to lift off of this committee of volunteers. So if one person just takes care of the, you know, all, all of the kind of the administrative things that are listed there, um, at like recruiting volunteers and distributing information and can make, doing the communication and ordering the supplies, taking care of the invoices and making sure that, that bills get paid and that sort of thing. Um, that was, I think when the personnel committee discussed this, that was one of the big things that influenced us was that this is really, an administrative position and they wanted to have a pay rate that was like an athletic director from some town in Boston and we said no these are administrative activities and put this at the administrative assistant salary and uh, so I know it doesn't address Paul's sportsmanship issue it doesn't necessarily address everything that Donna mentioned but it's it's mainly seen as this this committee needs administrative help, and this is one way to uh, address it to to give at least one of those people who's a, taking a leadership role. We also said that the person would not be a member of the well the board that oversees them, right? For uh, for reasons that seem you know reasonable. Um, I was, there was one last little thing in the back of my mind about this. Um, and I, I was, apparently it's gone out the other end of my brain uh, as well. Um, but I, I guess I don't see this as a, we're making a huge commitment to sports. Oh, no, I guess, the, yeah, I guess it would be good to clarify, does this money ultimately come from their fees? I know it's a part of their budget, but my understanding in the past was everything in their budget was paid out of their revolving fund. So that may it maybe that's not the case, but um, my understanding is this isn't uh, something that increases the general tax rate, uh, and that they will have to make this up with user fees. Uh, Lynn Sibley told us last week that they can't be used; that the revolving funds can't pay salaries. Here she is saying it again. <laughs> okay, salaries can't be paid. Okay, that's, that's okay. okay. Then, that, then that was my misunderstanding. Yeah. No, Joyce, um, you know, I thought I thought the job description um, was fine with the caveat of, you know, this guy's going to, this person is going to lead the whole uh, team here, um, that sportsmanship should be part of it. Yeah, uh, no, I, 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 I want to disagree a little bit. The leadership is provided by the rec commission and they have a chair and they have a co-chair and a secretary and all of those. Those people are the leaders. This person is doing the administrative work on their behalf. Okay, that's where I see the difference. And it doesn't necessarily cure your problem. It could be that the people leading the rec commission, you know, are gonna stack teams. 
Um, yeah. But that would be more of a, a policy that they ought to adopt. I, I don't think it belongs in a job description. I think part of the confusion, uh, and I understand this more now that I hear that the discussion has been are we hiring a director, are we hiring a coordinator slash administrative assistant, is that the responsibility to coordinate and supervise youth sports programs is not what you're going to ask the administrative support person who's paying your invoices and keeping the schedule to do. I think it's, I mean, I understand that's not our responsibility, but I think that is confusing. A little bit, a little bit. Um, Okay. Um, I make a motion to approve it. We have a second. Aye. Uh, like All those in favor? Aye. 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 Brenda? Aye. Donna? No. One abstention. I'm not staying. I'm voting no. One, no, no. <laughs> I know the difference. <laughs> Donna is yeah. not oh, a No. <laughs> All right, number three really doesn't affect us. It's not gonna cost the town anything. Contractors are gonna pay for it. So four is the highway department wage increases. Okay. Um, Amy, could, could you get rid of that? Okay. Highway department. Keith presented proposals to increase the following wages. Part time operator, $16 to $22 per hour. Operator, laborer, with one to three years experience, 2054 to 2250. And three plus years operator laborer experience. 2122 to 2325. He suggested that the increases were needed to remain competitive for hiring and retaining trained, qualified employees. Okay. The personnel committee unanimously recommends one abstention that the following wage rates be increased um, as previously stated. Okay. Um, Seeing how we have someone on the personnel committee who represents the finance committee. We kind of touched on this last week that the yeah. part time operator is somebody Keith brings in to help plow snow if we get a lot of snow. And, you know, I said personally, I wouldn't get out of bed in the middle of the night for $16 an hour. So, well, 22 was reasonable. Okay. Uh, there's nobody. Currently in the one to three operator labor position, mm -hmm. uh, that is truly going to be a harder and harder position to fill because now you're going to have to go to the uh, CDL driving schools to get your CDL, and I think Dan said that's going to be somewhere in the vicinity of ten thousand dollars now. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to be hard to just you know. Going to hire somebody for twenty-one dollars an hour, and they got to pay if they don't already have it. They got to go pay ten thousand dollars to get a license. So, okay. And same thing with the three-year operator labor. There's two employees in that category. You got to try and keep the guys you got. It's getting harder and harder to get yep. anybody to replace them. Yep. So, and those insurances range. <laughs> It's um, going to cost another $6,681 a year. Right. right. Um, I, I, I just would ask, I would ask you this question, and maybe anyone else can jump in. When we're looking at the medians, the median pays for these positions, and we're looking over the 10 towns, yep. um, and we're always talking about the apples, the oranges, um, do our job descriptions match their job descriptions? Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, there may be some minor discrepancies, but all in all, they're about the same. It's pretty cut and dry. You're a truck driver, laborer, 
and you got to have a hoisting license and you got to have a CDL with a class B, blah, blah, blah. Minimum, there's minimum requirements. So, any other questions or comments regarding? Did Joyce have something? No, that was from Karen. So he was his question. Oh. Um, so, um, so moved. I make a motion to uh, accept as right. I second it. All well, three. Hold on. Positions? Yeah, let's do all three at once. All three at once. Okay. Um, okay. So um, it's the motion's been made. It's been seconded. We will vote. Tom. Aye. 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 Brenda. Aye. Okay. Aye. Okay. Who else is on there? Um, what's next? Okay, keep that annual salary survey review. Okay. Um, Jim, you want to kick that off? On to number six? Yeah. yeah. The personnel committee noted that the police chief's salary is showing 3.8% lower than the median salary for the 10 comparable towns. And suggested that the police chief have a discussion with the select board as he has an employment agreement directly with the select board. Select board has agreed to increase the salary to the comparable median an additional $2,809 per year. Comments, questions, committee. I just have a question regarding the police chief's multi-year contract that personnel absolutely nothing at all yeah so zero representatives is not it. no personnel has nothing okay to do with the my police point chief. is the select board is here yeah my question is to the select board so okay. don't get defensive <laughs> i don't want to have anything to do with them i <clears throat> If, if there's a multi-year contract, one would think at the beginning of the contract when it's negotiated that surveys would be collected, salary and total compensation information would be collected and agreed upon between the select board and the police chief for that, is it three years? Yeah, yeah three years for that three-year period. Now in the middle of this three-year period, we're asking for an adjustment and that, that's, what I'm trying to understand better. One light thing, so I wasn't around for the negotiation oh, okay. of the contract. Uh, Joyce, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Um, uh, I, the, the contract is written such that we can reconsider compensation at any time. That the, uh, the police chief would get whatever colas the rest of the town gets, um, and that yeah, you know, we can we can look at their salary at any point, and it doesn't it doesn't have to be settled at the beginning and only considered every three years. There's how what's the length of that contract? Three, three years. Three years. And what year are we in now? And I year. think next year will be the third year, so it'll be a, a year of negotiating. Okay. So if the median comes up with all the other 10 towns over the next year, um, that will be part of the conversation then, right? Yeah, absolutely. Joyce, one more question. Was the median determined when the contract was first negotiated? And Yes, we used the information that the personnel committee collected. So other towns media yeah. are, are, are data. Correct, correct, yeah. yeah. At a higher level than ours did in this three year period, first two years. Right, period. right. This is a little unusual. Um, I yeah. thought, and I, I don't understand why on the police chief, it, the other towns went up so much. I, I don't know the enough about what happened in each individual town, but it just looked like they were all a little bit higher. Um, and they must have given people <clears throat> bigger raises than we gave them last year. Then we did the same thing you do, throw out the, the, the biggest, throw out the smallest, take the median of those that are in the middle. Okay. Any, any more questions? Brenda, do you have any? No, okay. 
Um, I thought I saw her hand. She is just waiting. Sorry. Um, hi, it's Brenda. I'm sending a test right now, but it's not going. So anyway. Um, oh, yeah, there it is. There's my question by test. So if we're in, the, I, I must have missed this. We're in the middle of a three year contract with the police chief, and I definitely want to be at least on par with the other towns. But why is there a reason that we're reviewing it um, midway or two thirds of the way through it? Um, yeah, what's the reason? We review everybody's salary every year on the personnel committee. And this personnel committee only makes recommendations. Okay, they made a recommendation to the select board and the select board is the body that takes it up on the, with, the, with the police chief. And he made the case to the select board. Um, and the, the contract is written such that it allows that. That's the contract that he's negotiated. Brendan, did you get that answer? Okay. Okay. All righty. I did get. Not sure. I. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Thank you. No, it's just that we, you know, you you can see, you can see where the thinking conflict is here when we're thinking of contracts, and it's a three-year contract, and you 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 negotiate the parameters of that contract prior to year one, and you expect that person or those numbers to be set until year three. And then in year three, you look at it again. Um, and I, uh, you know, he's not an hourly worker. Um, and, you know, individuals in town who, you know, are, are, are forced to, or are part of that hourly workforce, um, you know, I can see their salaries being looked at on a yearly basis, but, um, when you have contracted salary people, um, I don't know how wise that is. Um, our, our, uh, do we have other multi-year contract positions? I know Brian has one. Brian has a multi-year contract. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Everybody else is a regular salary employee or more. Salary or hourly. More hourly. And th this sort of gets back to what I've been talking about before with the COLAs. Yeah. And the salaries, but when you do comparables, you're always going to be looking at moving targets because the oh, people you're comparing to right. are going to move. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Right. Um, and which, their which contracts is, might not be uh, right. coincident with ours. Right. Right. They, they may not have contracts that may not be coincident with ours. Right. Uh, but that, you know, if he's gotten his contract, that it can be looked at and that we want to keep it comparable. And that's and it just done. it just seems like this is bound to happen because year one contracts are written okay year two well we're right we're not writing new contracts because we already have a contract in year one but in year two the other ten towns six of them might be writing new contracts yeah. well their numbers are going to be a little higher than where we started the year before so when you go back at the end of year two and look at the comps. The comps are all higher. No kidding. Because you negotiated almost two years before that, which is why we have contracts. But that's still any wrong. But anyway, the contract, the contract, as Jerry said, the language is in the contract that it was. We looked at so that's. Um, so that uh, I don't think that's in the best interest of the town to have that kind of language in there. Um, but I may be wrong. So yeah. Um, well, if you don't do the raise this year, then you've got to do a super duper raise the next year because they're just falling behind. I think it's just easier to handle it on a year by year basis. And if that may be the case, I'm just, and, I, and Fred has already made the arguments that. If you somehow overcompensate, it's the you know time will since we're using comps that it will be evened out over time. In the long run, we're not in trouble. Well, we, we hope so. Okay. Alrighty, I make a motion we approve the. Uh, maybe we shouldn't. <laughs> 
No, I'm not going to do it. No, that's all. That's a select board that made the decision. So, but it's a budget thing. It's a budget. Ah. Well, we have to, uh, and Brian's not here to tell us whether we should or should. But we have to recommend, don't we? Um, I think we do. Yeah. Which means we need to make a motion to recommend. I make a motion we recommend the 28 two, yeah, $2,809 increase in the police chief's salary. Do I have a second? I second it. Okay, let's vote on this. Donna? Aye. Dan? Aye. Jim? Aye. Tony? Aye. Aye for myself. Brenda? Am I allowed to abstain? Sure. I guess. I abstain. Um, yeah. You don't feel I comfortable abstain. with the information? That's I'm just going to abstain. Okay, you absolutely can. Absolutely. Um, okay, so next. Okay. Um, we don't need to deal with seven. Um, number eight. Dan, could you do us the honors? Yeah, number eight. Personnel committee noted that the wage for the part time. Police officer is 4.59% low median for the 10 comparable counties. Personnel committee unanimously recommends that the part time officer wage be increased from 1960 per hour to 2050 per hour, which would be a total of $2,190. Questions, comments? No questions, no comments. Then I will take a vote. Do I have a motion? I make a motion. I accept it. Second? I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And Brenda? Aye. 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 Okay, that's unanimous. Okay, let's pass next. Okay, um, we have number nine, Donna. Uh, Keith discussed his, let me just go with the yellow part. Sure. In, in an effort to account for uh, Keith Bardwell's additional responsibilities, the personnel committee unanimously recommends with one abstention, Keith presumably, that the highway and building superintendent's salary be raised to an amount equal to 8% over the median salary of the highway superintendents from the 10 comparable towns at uh, $1,554. Comments, questions? Well, we discussed that already. Yeah. Yeah. We did. So I make a motion we approve it. We have a second? I second. All those in favor, Donna? Aye. Dan? Aye. Jim? Aye. Balls? Aye. Aye. Brenda? Aye. Okay. Next. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Which we already voted on. Right? Yep. 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 Okay. All right. Um, what are our other marching orders from Brian? I see Brian. Was he on the line? Yeah. No. I think Amy came in on his. Oh. All right. Um, Paul, if I can raise something, sure. Point that I brought up with you. Yes. Right, right here. Good time. Uh. Last time, Finance Committee generally voted or thought to transfer money to general stabilization and capital stabilization. I've been thinking about it over the past week. In gen, first of all, our stabilization accounts are in solid shape. We're, yeah. we're around 10% of the budget, which was Brian said we should do. My thinking is that it is much easier to get approval and from the community from town meeting. If you're spending money out of targeted general uh, stabilization accounts rather than general, if you take money out of general stabilization, people think 
you're sabotaging the town in case of an emergency. Or I think it's probably better practically either transfer these monies to building stabilization. One of the things, the thing that triggered this for me is I had a meeting at Frontier. One of Frontier's boilers went, and they're looking at a four hundred and fifty thousand dollar bill to replace or repair or do something with thirty year old boilers. And even worse, over the next several years, they're looking at millions of dollars for the roof of Frontier. One of the members of that committee from Conway said that they set up a school stabilization fund for their elementary school to cover potential very large expenditures, which I think is an excellent idea that maybe we should consider here. The school will build, will need not a new building at this point. I'm not talking about nickel and dime repairs, I'm talking about things like roofs and boilers and air conditioning. Does Frontier fall under the one we already have for our town village? No, Frontier. The, so you're saying make another one? The, this is for our, for our school. The elementary school. Strictly the elementary, the elementary school. school. That has nothing school. to do with Frontier. Yes, for town buildings. Right. Well, the, 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 the building stabilization fund, I mean, we could include it there, I guess, if we wanted to, or set up a separate fund. I just think it's much easier to present to town meeting spending out of a targeted fund than spending out of a general fund, which is seen as <clears throat> leaving yourself vulnerable. Mm -hmm. e even though those funds we know and have heard are in actual shape. When you go to town meeting and say we want to take this out of our emergency fund, it doesn't play as well, even though it's the same money. Yes, Fred, I've, um, yes. I've only been to 12 annual meetings. Yes. I have never heard any concern about which stabilization. Fund we rarely take money policy. out of stabilization. Yeah. Well, we, I have certainly yes. been at meetings where yes. we did. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm yeah. you were using the okay. passive voice and I'm not sure whose oh. opinion you were representing. I, I, I'm my own. Uh -huh. Just in, I think it is easier to sell something to someone <laughs> that we are taking money to repair the school at they fund to repair schools. From my point of view, yeah. Fred, I don't want to make it easier. I want to make it harder for people to spend money, even though it's their money and it's in the town you know, bank account, so to speak. I, I I don't think we should make it easier for them to spend it. I want well, them to know exactly what we're spending. Well, it, it, the stabilization accounts, almost by definition, are rainy day funds for specific. Yes. Well, we have specific. We have a, a general stabilization, which is our quote unquote bank account. Right. Then we have. Uh, special accounts, vehicles, town buildings. Well, and then there's a gen sort of a general out of bad term, the capital yes. stabilization fund as well. Yeah. But I think that when we get an emergency at the school, who starts falling? It's I think it will be <coughs> we want it at that point to be easy to fund an emergency project. Like in the same way as we did this year with the uh, police vehicle, there was absolutely no objection at all. No, because it was in vehicle stabilization. Because, because, because we had set aside in. for that particular expenditure. Right. There was very little discussion. About and there was very little discussion. And I think there, again, yeah. my opinion only, there might have been more speculation, uh, more conversation about it if we had to take the general stabilization from 361,000 under 300,000. To fund the cruiser. To, to fund a cruiser. Possibly. Right. Yeah. But, but, but you, you began your yeah. proposal talking about the opinions of the general public at town meeting. Yeah. And now we're talking about a decision, a police cruiser decision that has only involved this committee and right. I, not even I, 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 so I just spoke. <laughs> no, no, when I talk about town meeting, you're, you're correct. No. In more, this, this committee. And I understand the, what the select saying. board. It's much easier to allocate emergency funds 
when there's a fund dedicated to it than to draw down from what is supposed to be the and what's the what's your the capital, capital what's the capital committee I, you know, I don't. I don't think we we should be setting up for frontier. It's not for no, frontier. No, not for frontier. It's strictly elementary school. Right. It's strictly weekly elementary. We have a town building we account. We have a town building fund, which includes weekly elementary. It's, it's we own it. It's a town building. Well, it's a it's town building. Then, then so I would say I would still say then we put additional funds. Into the building stabilization. That is something that I would agree with. Then and agree instead with that, of, rather than general. Okay. I'm I, I'm fine with that. The, the building stabilization last year was general was set up pretty much on the premise that we're going to need a new highway garage and was sort of no, it included no, it was it, it, it included other buildings. Yeah. Okay, but then the fire it, station, police station. Put it in building stabilization. Yeah. I'm fine with that. I yeah. have nothing to putting in stabilization. Yeah. In general, it's just a question of which which no, which general. pocket which pocket it's going which pocket it's going into, and I I just think it is I'm better to put it into a more specific pocket than the general pocket. And the reason downstream it becomes easier to spend that money is because of discussions like this, because yes. we know we've hashed it out prior, right. and then when the bill comes in. I think, not I think about where we're going to pay. Right, from. right. I think right. people feel exactly. good about the fact that we anticipated these kind of bills, and we have the funds there ready to pay it off. Yeah. You know, pay so it essentially, all, all I'm saying is then to take that ninety-five thousand that's earmarked for those two funds, for forty-five for general and fifty for capital, and move that to building fund. Not all of it, or so, some a, what, a what, portion whatever, of it. Yes, a, 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 a substantial it. portion of it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think. Are, that, I don't think is there something going on over here that we don't know about yet, or what? No, no. I, I think it's not. Not that I know of. There may be, but I don't know about it either. Uh, but they, they, this is just triggered by what happened at Frontier. Yeah, yeah. It is, Dan. This has nothing to do with funding Frontier. This just that just where the thought came to me. Yeah. That. Well, did we? We've already decided what we're putting into those. We did. We did. Year, so I we did. Should be overdone with for this year. But you we can like put more in. We can. We, we can split it up where we can take some of those monies and move them to um, the building. Stable. Stable. Yeah, it's not too late to to, no. to change that. Well, no, it's not. Can I ask a, a question? You got a what question? What is the capital stabilization fund if it is not a building fund? It's it's more of a it's not earmarked for anything specific. Right. It could be a fire engine. It could be a it could be anything. It's any tangible object. Right. Yeah. Any okay. any right. I town the expense. Yeah. I, yeah. The I mean, if there's a if yeah. there's a even though the town or, uh, the water department has an enterprise fund, right. if 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 all of a sudden they need a I don't know a two hundred thousand dollar pump or a new well or something. Mm -hmm. We have a means for, to pay for it. Right. It's for a physical object. It's not for new landscaping. No. Right. No. Yeah. yeah. And and none of those funds are supposed to be for uh, just annual budget items. They're supposed, Understood. To, supposed to be for major right. emergency types. That, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> the needs. So, what are our total numbers here again for? That 55 uh, 45 set to go to general stabilization, 50 capital stabilization. General capitalization. So, um, yeah, we could do. Yeah, Brian had it all on the screen. We had the numbers plugged in. Mm -hmm. I got a few notes here. What do what you know, sir? That we had 143,000 that we were going to split up. If we put 45 into one and 85 in another. No, it's it's on the. It's you a, picked up this spreadsheet. Okay, I didn't get that one. This it's is, on there. Yeah, it's on. There. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's 140,000 set to go to 140,000 various stabilization right here. Yes. 
So we already put 25 into it this year, into building stabilization. And then we put 50 in general, no, 45 in general, 50 in capital. So you wanna take- I, I, I would say essentially flip those numbers and put the 50 and 45 into the- You wanna put 90 into the buildings. Well, not necessarily all, some of them go into vehicles too, but I would put the lion's share into buildings because we know we've got building issues. It's only the highway department coming down the road. Yeah, but the only thing I could possibly see us spending any money out of the building account for the highway garage would maybe be for like some point, some money that we would have to come up with which we, before we go out to bid. Which to, is not going to be inexpensive on its own. No, but I mean, that, that can run fifty to $100,000 just for plans. And we certainly don't want to take that kind of money out of out of the annual budget. Well, from a needs perspective, coming down the road, um, we have what will tax general stabilization? What will tax capital, vehicle, and building? We know vehicle is a constant, revolving. constant revolving door. Um, the building. We got fifty thousand dollars in there right now, and um, I don't know if I'm not the one to say that's adequate or no. inadequate. I just know that buildings <laughs> cost a lot of money. Well, and, that, that's my point. And, and I can tell you that the, the Conway representative said that their school building fund has two hundred thirty thousand in it. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's let's, I, let's not take, that we need that much, or we do. I don't know, but I'm saying that's where they are. You want to change the 45, let's change, let's do it this way. Let's take the 45 that we were going to put in general. We'll put nothing in general and take that 45 and add it to 25, which will give us, uh, which will add on to that. So if we're putting 70 in there, which would then give us 95,000. Which is, I think, a much... I agree with that. Yeah. You want and I, I didn't come in with any specific numbers. I'm just uh, you know, general I'm, I'm just using I think the numbers we already plugged point. in. We'll just move them around. That's yeah, I, I just yeah. am saying I think Buffett more should be going to the specialized. Okay. And in this case, uh, build them. Somehow made that. Up. Okay, so what we have here right now is we are removing the 45 from general. Yeah. And we're adding that 45 to the building stabilization, yeah. which will make that okay. $70,000. Okay. So, in terms of the stabilization accounts, we do this all in one. I'd like to make a motion that we place $50,000 in capital stabilization, $20,000 in vehicle stabilization, and $70,000 into the building stabilization. Um, I'll second. Um, I, I agree. I think it might be good if the motion uh, made clear that we are overriding the decision that we voted last week. Okay. Okay. Um, would you like me to restate that? No. I'm happy. <laughs> okay is a good thing. Not, not, nothing is said in stone <laughs> yet. And because we could vote again next week. And, yeah. um, right. okay. and yeah. as Donna so no, succinctly I, I, put it, we are overriding what we did last week, previous week, so that we will have a total now of okay, um, one hundred twenty thousand in building stabilization. No, 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 no. I'm sorry, no, nope, stop. No, no, no. Seventy, ninety-five, ninety-five, ninety-five k in building, and we have forty-seven six zero seven in vehicle, and we'll have two forty-three. 267 in capital, and in general, we'll have 406875 yeah. and free cash 70,000. No, in general, you'll be back at 361875. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't take that out. Give, give me that number again, Fred. 
That's the, the number that's at 361 875. 361 875 in what's um, capital? Capital will, this is currently 193, which will be going up to 243. Well, what's free cash again? I'm sorry. 175. So the, the two free cash is 73 or 70. Is, is this wrong? Oh, this no. because this doesn't because have a the, doesn't doesn't have payback. Right. Right, right. Yeah, it's a little little one. So we're hoping we're gonna get paid back and we're gonna have 175. Right. Right. That will happen. Okay. Um, what we said. Yes. Next. Well, that's all that you didn't actually vote. That's next. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fred's getting hungry. <laughs> <laughs> just you just want you you make you motion. have to do this yet again. I make a motion. That we are going to make some adjustments to the reserve account balances. The general stabilization account is going to have three hundred sixty-one thousand eight hundred seventy-five thousand in it. The capital stabilization is going to have two hundred forty-three thousand two hundred sixty-seven in it. Vehicle stabilization is going to have 47,607. And the building stabilization is going to have a total of 95,000. Based on the numbers that are on, based on the numbers on this sheet. Okay. We have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Brenda? I think I just, I totally support it, but I think because it's, you're changing something you voted on last week when I wasn't able to be at the meeting, that I should probably abstain. Okay, that's a good point. All right. Okay. Now, what's next? Amy, come on. Key up, Ryan. No. Come on. <laughs> Brian, that's a lot of pressure. I, yeah, that's too much pressure. Too much pressure for her. She's only she's only the assistant. Yeah, I just work here. Yeah. Well, oh I boy, just, Brian I said very record. good things about you. I've heard that before. I, I can't record on the meeting, and that's my very very. Thing. But it did give me the email. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, generally speaking, I think what we should do is look at the operating budget and um, let's make a decision now and have a vote. And by eight o'clock, we're, we're done with this. Are we good? Yep. Let's go. Jim, got a question? You got that? Got that question? Look, well, we don't have a final operating budget until everything's so plugged in. Yeah. Right, until the coal is until added. The coal is. Right, but um, I, I think the Brian's intention was to take care of everything else and just clear the operating yeah. budget next week. Yeah, when okay. when everything is are we good on set. the capital? Yeah, I think we, we, I think, I think we put that to bed, right? We did. Yes. Okay. Oh, it's true. We got to put the coal. Yeah, there, there was no capital because uh, uh, everything's being was funded with the was COVID right. money took care of the capital. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, the one no, it, it left none for this committee to consider. All right. I think we're done. With right. all I, think, uh, I think that's so probably it. Yeah, yeah, Any further comments or questions? COVID Next meeting. Next meeting. Um, when does he need us? Let me. All right. Um, oh. Yes, and that's what we're about. Who's got a calendar? Anybody have a calendar? I can get one on my phone. Please. Uh, Tommy, you're gone next week. Next what? two weeks, I'm gone. You're gone the next two weeks, right? I am. 
He's got to have, he's, he's got to. Um, yes. What? Yes. When does he need it? Should be next week. Oh, that. Yeah. I'll let it play like yes. it. Is he going to be back, though? I mean, he's got to be here. What? I mean, a week from tonight is the 19th, or you got to count here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, any conflicts with the 19th or the 26th? Any conflicts in the room? Brenda? No. I can't, I'm out the next two weeks. To, yeah. Uh, yes, I'm out both the 19th and the 26th. I let, I think I sent an email to both of you, but I'm out of the country. So okay. I'm not here the 19th or the 26th. You're not going to Aruba, are you? Just question. <laughs> Don't have to answer that. Uh, well, you know, COVID's probably going to cancel this trip, but uh, anyway, I'm going to the Dutch oh, waterways, and I, I sent Brian on. an email. I probably just, anyway, sorry, but I'm out the next two Tuesdays. All right, well, have fun. Um, okay, so uh, every, so in the, let me see, one, two, need four. We, got we need four. We have four. Okay, you're going to be here on the 19th or the 26th. Okay. Is there a special town meeting on the 26th, or did I put this on my calendar? Incorrect. Oh, no. Original, the original, original yeah. town meeting. Town meeting. Yeah. So I need to get rid of that. What are the chances we could wrap this all up next Tuesday? I think they're pretty good. I think they're high. It. He's very high. Let's put it in for the 19th. I know Tom's not going to be here. Brenda's not going to be here, but we'll soldier on. It's just the yep. way it is. That's the way it goes. You know? Yeah. you know how I feel. I know you. I know. All right. The 19th. And uh, hopefully that'll help Brian out and he can get everything together and, and have time um, to breathe. Okay. Uh, and, um, so that's that. Motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Brenda? Aye. So have fun. Thanks, everyone. On that vacation. Enjoy. Thanks.